you. Hello, everybody. Um, so, Nick, Gerald, you rolled a 33 on your perception check. Mm. It's your watch. It's nighttime. You can look out through this fairly narrow crevice to see the outside. You can look back and, and see your, your small collection of people. Uh, you guys probably have a little fire going. You usually do. And there's just something that's irking you. The little halfling is all rolled up in, in a blanket. But there's something off about that, like, blanketed up little pile of halfling. You've been suspicious already. You've been very suspicious already. And you're keeping a close eye on it. And it's just... It's too still. I go over and check. Sure enough, you you check, and it's just a blanket. There's no halfling in it. I check my money pouch. Your money pouch is there. I look to see if there's a bulge in the sack that contains the frozen rock. Well, that's like wrapped up in a blanket as well. So that's just kind of like a big heaping blanket pile next to Mike Michelson. I shake the rock awake. Yeah, that's uh, what's going on. Rock, the halfling's gone. I check my pockets. Your pockets are still there. I check what's supposed to be in my pockets and in They're my bag. They're still there. Every, all my possessions are there. Yeah, what is with this? Like, oh, there's a halfling that disappeared. I better check my pockets. You guys are racist. All of you. Are we racist, Neil, or would yes. we do this with any random person we found? I think frozen? you're doing it just because it's a halfling. <laughs> a halfling that's wearing chainmail has a short sword. Mm hmm. Sounds more like a fighter than a rogue to me. I don't think so, Neil. I mean, they could just be a really bad rogue. That's true. I mean, with in a universe besides, with Neil, uh, remember, skills and powers, there's no way. A rogue could be bad at the sneaky stuff. They could also be the uh, I hit people on top of the head, bonk, sort of thief. But you're still just assuming the halfling's a rogue in some way, shape, or form, man. That's racial profiling. I would do the same with a dwarf. I bet you or an would support human. stop and frisk halfling legislation. All right, sure, I would. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I know how to win these arguments, and it's just to agree with you <laughs> and move winning. on. <laughs> that is winning because now I don't have to deal with the argument. Just to make you racist and boom, you win. Boom. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Sure. I'm racist. What are you gonna do about it? Uh, yeah, exactly. uh, every every halfling is gonna steal all my stuff. All right. Cool. Oh, uh, are we gonna make it worse? Do, do we need to continue down this path, Neil? I don't know. What do you want to do? It's in game. What do you What do you guys doing? Okay. okay. Mike Michaelson's okay, so... asleep. They didn't wake me up. Yep. Not yet. Not yet. Remember, I'm the big one that hits things really hard. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so she's just gone. I don't just see her. Gone. I did, yeah. I didn't notice anything mm -hmm. on my. Um. On your watch, you didn't notice anything at all. All right. Yeah, I'll I'll wake middle management man up. Okay. But hey, halfling's gone. Don't know where she went. All right. Uh, I checked the the uh, the rock bundle. And using a stick, I'll carefully unwrap it to try to see if the the rock is still there, the, the blue rock. Uh, you unwrap the package, and it is gone. Somewhere so she, in the middle of the night, the halfling managed to, to take the rock out of the big bundle, roll the bundle up without anyone noticing, and slip out through the crack. Oh, oh! Oh, Rock, you're so racist, suspecting the halfling of stealing. Oh my god, stereotype Neil. Who's worse, Neil, the person for suspecting, the person for actually making them do it. And that's how you win the argument, kids. That seems Mitch kind of it. unlikely that she could <sighs> unwrap the whole bundle, wrap it back up, and all that business. It seems like it would be a difficult thing to do that. And yet, here we are. And yet, here we are. I said, well, there's only one thing you know, for it, to hunt this person down and retrieve our property and exact proper vengeance. You know, it's not racist if it's true. 
I mean, not to do that would be to invite further people to do that. We'd be encouraging crime. Yes. You could do that, or you could just do the talk gently, carry a big stick around, show her the big stick, and then say, hey, give it back, or nobody's going to find your body because we're out in the middle of nowhere. But you carried a big stick. You carried three. In fact, the sticks were so so big, they were actually swords, and it still didn't deter her from he trying to steal. He carried yeah, that's... two big sticks. He didn't and buy one regular the size stick. I still have three sticks. I've got these two, I've got this one, and then I've got a giant rock. Could always just smash her skull in. Um, I feel like by stealing, she has disrespected the rock. Yeah, yeah, I'm not happy. And his abs. It's like she doesn't think that your abs are are intimidating. I don't, know where, steal this rock. I don't know what path you're going down there. Like, you lost me. Like, my, my abs are pretty great. <laughs> she never said anything about my abs, though. Uh, just a second. Well, it just seems like a normal person would see your abs, respect them, and go, that's not a person I should cross. So by crossing you, she's by definition disrespecting your abs and questioning whether you even lift. What do you guys want to do? Well, we need to track her down and exact vengeance. Take out the continual eight stone and start looking for halfling tracks. All right. Does anyone have a tracking proficiency? No. All right. I don't no. think you can take that, but I'll look in the skills and powers. Uh, tracking is a proficiency that is available, generally speaking, but it mm. might be restricted to your class. Uh, restricted to your class somehow. Not Anywho. sure there's any fully restricted things. No, it would just be, it would cost more. Um, let, why don't you all make me perception checks? I'll add the modifiers for tracking and whatnot. Um, and we'll see if you can pick up the, the trail of the halfling. Yes, I can. Oh, mm. sweet Jesus. Are those three natural 20s in a row for perception checks? <laughs> this is what you get, Neil. This is what you get for claiming racism and then actively supporting the stereotypes. Neil, Neil, that's four natural 20s four in a row. Four natural 20s on perception checks in a row. This is what you get. We're just trying to have some fun dicking around, and you're the one that's feel oh, racism in here. Someone's a little sensitive about it. Am I sensitive about it, or am I just fed up with people claiming it at every possible circumstance? Ah, uh, uh, yeah. That's what I'm sick of. All right. I think it was fun in D&D, &D, but it's all right. Uh, you definitely find the tracks. <laughs> there are a lot of tracks. Uh, it's quite obvious. There's, you know, it rained recently, and the ground's still kind of fresh and muddy, and there's these, like, small little... Good thing she's half our size and has half the movement speed. Yep. <laughs> uh, she does have a few hours head start on you guys, though. Well, to be fair, I'd like to know how she freaking managed to get away with just, like, grabbing this thing out when I'm pretty sure Rob was sleeping near the fire, had that yeah. thing near the fire easily. Yeah, lit. I mean, that would have been, like, in my pack. And she managed that... to, to do that and, like, well, and you wrapped it up in a blanket. I mean, I didn't hear that any. I put it in my pack, lit. so I just kind of thought it was well, next to you. What, what, I, what do you think I'm doing? Like kicking it down the road in a well, tied up bundle? I guess what I'm saying of is if you if something's not clearly defined, it's up for grabs and can be interpreted in any different way. So if it was important right. that it was in your pack, you should say it's in my pack. If you don't well, say it, then I can assume I mean it's in any other place. Uh, you weren't moving it around. You were camped. You said I roll it up in a blanket. And that's that was the end of the, the the tasks with it. So it was on with the blanket beside you. That's a that's a pretty liberal assumption. Like, yep, we're gonna leave yeah. I'm just saying, if you if it's important to you that something be done in a certain way, you should specify it. Because if you don't, these sorts of confusions can happen. Um, well, gee, well, 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 Neil, my socks are on my feet. I'm not just carrying them around. Yeah, draped probably. over my forearm. My <laughs> shoes are also on my feet. I mean, I know it says that I have shoes, but I didn't specify whether they're in my pack or 
on my head or there's only so detailed we can get before it turns into an hour describing the exact manner in which we're walking you know if that's the way that you guys want to play it then that's the way you guys are going to play it but if it's right. important like hey you know this thing that i really care about i'm going to keep track of it in this way seems like an appropriate thing to do also it, makes sense for you like to roll it up in a blanket goalies, and wrap it in your arms left them lying out like around us and we didn't put them in our pouches it, there are many things, many interpretations on these events. It doesn't, you don't necessarily want to wrap this thing in a ball and then put it in your backpack and then put your backpack in front of you. Like, I, I'm not going to assume you do actions. If you don't specify an action, I'm not going to assume you were going to take it unless it's a common thing like socks on feet, right? I'm not going to assume your socks on your All hands, right. but if you say I wrap it up in my blanket, I just assume you've wrapped it up in your blanket. I'm not also going to then assume you put it in your bag our because then that might be imply that you need to take things out of your bag. We get into a whole discussion and I'm not going to assume extra actions that the party makes. You've been playing this game for like a million years, Rob. You should know how this works. Neil, you know I pull out my extra socks and put them on my hands. Just... Uh, okay, right. you now have socks on your hands. All right, guys, okay. let's find Absolutely. her. Absolutely, I do the same. All right, everyone's got Fader, socks on her hands. I stole a blue rock from you. I do not have socks on my hands. I think I, I can do that without to any fight. sort of negative repercussions. Hi, we're going to kill you because vengeance is ours. See, there's plenty of reasons you might put socks on your hands. <laughs> okay. All right, what do you guys want to do now? Well, we're tracking this. We're gonna track yeah. her yes. down. All right. We're tracking. We're you are get, tracking. Get some freaking frontier justice on her. Uh, you are following these tracks. They are heading due west, and as the the sun comes up in the sky, as the you know everything begins to grow a little bit lighter, you can see dark black smoke arising from a little farmhouse, maybe two miles east, uh, west from where you are. Do the tracks lead that way? They do. Excellent, let's go check it out. As long as the tracks keep leading that way. Okay. You guys walk into this little tiny, it's not even like a village, it's like a small little hamlet uh, to find the buildings burned, the bodies in the streets, and dogs kind of sniffing around at the corpses, flies buzzing, starting to buzz around the bodies. Uh, you can see doors knocked open. All this happened recently, like within like an hour or two. Well, uh, you go around Bring and you. The fire's still burning. Yeah, the, the buildings are still on fire. Then, yeah, it's pretty recent. Yeah. Hmm. Perhaps the stone holds more power than It definitely doesn't belong in the hands of a halfling who has such ill intent. All right, guys, I've got an idea here. Just keep it down with the we're searching for. I'd like to get our stone back. Let's just play it off like we don't know, all right? And if we do find her, we're like, oh yeah, we were heading to Ragnar as it was anyway. And that way, she might not suspect us being angry or knowing. So that way, when, she, when we do catch her, we can jump on her, all right? So let's, that's great, yeah. Rock. See, that's why I've always defended yeah. you against people that said you don't have good ideas. No, I just pissed off because she took that rock and I thought it was kind of cool. And I had a great idea for it. Anyway, let's see if we can find her. Hey, Carrie, here? We saw some smoke and we were heading this way. Just want to know if you're all right. Because you said she was going due west, right? Yep. And west is towards where we're heading. Yep. 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 Uh, cool. There's no response. A mangy dog walks by and sniffs at you for a little bit and then walks away. This hamlet has maybe 10 buildings in it. Um, and they're all on fire in one way or another, but there aren't really enough bodies in town to account for all the people who would live here. There's maybe six corpses. Are they human corpses or? Yeah, what? they're all human. Interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll shout out. Were there any survivors? We're here to help. 
Yeah, anybody? I'll like go poking around, still on the lookout for tracks, especially like anything halfling. Side. Yeah, halfling tracks leaving from another side of town, or any All other right. strange sort of tracks. As you look around, you catch uh, like a cellar door that is like slightly propped open, and you can see a face down in the cellar, like peeking out through the little crack at you. Hey, don't worry, I'm not. I'm not here to her. I just saw the fire, you know, concerned passerby. Like, seriously, we're here. <laughs> the to trap door get like the, the cellar door gets pulled down suddenly and quickly. I can beat my way through any freaking door you have. I'm not going to because I respect your privacy and trying to be safe. I can beat the crap out of anything that's tr- that burned your village to the ground. I'm just tr- legitimately trying to help. Yes, it this is the rock, one of the great again. heroes of shenanigans. And then open a little bit more and goes, is she gone? Who? Is who gone? The halfling. What did she do? Which she tell us and be especially explicit about any gestures or words she said while using her powers. Huh? Just who? There, there was a little halfling came into town, asked if there was any food around. We, we made her an offer of some cherry pie and she ate it and then just pulled out her swords and started hacking people to bits. I, I ducked in here as soon as the bloodshed began. And then she started burning buildings? The person nods, uh-huh. Did she have any sort of blue glow or? Ha- the person I'm shakes its head. Just started, just started slaughtering people but no signs of icy wrath. Shrugs. Yeah. I th- interest. Very interesting. Very interesting. Did you see which way she went? We um, have to stop her before she does this to other people. Yes. Oh, this- because that's what heroes do. You're so noble. I I saw yeah. her go past the the small mill further west, but I don't know if she made up might have changed directions or something. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, thank you very much for your help. Um, the person opens the cellar door and comes out and brings with her uh, a few small children as well. And I look around the, the destroyed village. Do you know where the nearest town is? Or the nearest safe place? Well, there's another village westward. If you follow the road sign, the path signs. Go there. It's called Brown Grass. It's not a Brown very grass. pleasant place. Mm. Well, you know what? Find yourself the place you feel the safest. Get there. Um, I, mean, I guess inform the guards. See, if, do what you can. You know, let the authorities know that there's some crazy halfling on the loose who's burning down hamlets. Person nods enthusiastically. The um, authorities. What have they done to prevent this? I don't know. Only Last there time. was a stronger lord. Yeah, Someone it's, of it's, unlimited it's power who could stop this sort of thing from seem happening. seem to always get you if you do anything wrong. It's pretty crazy how effective they are, isn't it? And I'm, I'm like, I'm going to go the direction she pointed me towards where the halfling went. Mm-hmm. And okay. like, guys, let's go. Can I get perception checks from the party? Once again, to All pick right. up the trail. Uh, secret uh, roll 20 dev that is watching, because I know you guys always are. Please. Oh. Yay. That's good enough. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. That'll do. That'll do. Uh, That'll yes, do, you Rob. can. That'll do. There is a little signpost pointing due west, and there are also some fairly fresh tracks leading down the dusty path. Uh, maybe not so dusty because it just rained yesterday. Yeah, yes. was a, you made a pretty big deal about this storm. Yeah, so it's not dusty uh, through the, the cracked path. Yeah. Um, and sure enough, you get maybe a mile down this trail when you start to see smoke arising in the next village over. All right, we were like, I immediately kind of noticed this, like as I woke up and we just started to follow her immediately. We can't be that much behind her for her to just be burning cities and then moving on. Well, you know, six buildings trailing. in this last place. Or what was it? Ten? Ten buildings in this last place, yeah. 
They probably have thatched roofs too, don't they? They all have did thatched have, roofs. Did she have a like fire slavery? starting ability so that she could create the fire on the wet roofs? Slaughtering everyone, ten buildings. It was like she. There were six I, bodies. All right, Nick. Let's put it this way: level six fighter or level five fighter right here. I've got a plus eight to hit. I get three attacks every two rounds. I could easily take out like twenty peasants in like 10 15 minutes yes but that's 10 15 minutes we've been following her for like what a couple hours now we could be right behind her for all we know yeah. we're twice as fast as she is i agree with you yeah. this is our, like this is starting to get suspicious here but it's not entirely unfeasible yet Fair. well let's now, see what's most, going on in this next the moment we go, we go more than a day like we hit a day we saw and found her that is when you start knowing like neil is pulling some dm hacks here mm. the rock, See, we're, we get into a way. dangerous territory when you think that that would be dm hacks rather than interesting information about your enemy or am i calling it dm hacks simply for the entertainment value probably not <laughs> <laughs> well the rock we need a, a hardy warrior to lead the way it seems like only you could stop her <coughs> you guys push on uh, Again, maybe half survival. a mile from now, you know, uh, what is that? Half a mile, like in 10 minutes of walking or no, five. Yeah, like 10 minutes of walking is about a half mile, right? Something like that, eight minutes of walking? I don't know. Um, a few minutes down the road, you can see the, the smoke plumes coming off of the next village are growing and growing. And you can see the next village maybe a mile away. It's pretty close. Uh, and I it looks that. like it's... Yeah, and it's not, at first it kind of looked just like normal, you know, I'm lighting the, the fire in my fireplace in the morning so I can cook supper or breakfast for everybody, smoke. This is now starting to be too much smoke for like a little village in the morning. Yeah. The, yeah. Gerald, why don't you climb on the rock's back and, and he can carry you so we can move faster and try to catch her before she gets away. All righty then, if you're all right with that rock. I don't know, I think, even then, you might still be a little heavy for me to be moving my full time. Cause like, it's different carrying stuff on your back than carrying a person. Carrying a person is a little bit awkward. And I think that would end up slowing us down in the long All right, then let's just continue. He, he actually here, here, I, hold on. I think I hand you like my shield and then just like a bag of gold. And then I should be like fully unencumbered. Yeah. I'll take those. Shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so fully unencumbered, you guys book it the remaining half mile or mile to the next village over. Um, and you come across this small stack of bodies, much larger than the last one, maybe 10 bodies total that are like being piled, that had been piled in a little mound. And you can see Carrie, the halfling, arm like wrapped around some random townswoman, dragging her over to this body pile. No, no I cast a spell immediately. Dispel? All right. A uh, spell. A spell, okay, I was gonna say. I'm casting light on her eyes. Excellent. Um, why don't we... Uh, Rock in my shield! Book. I dump the shield. I uh, pretty much dump the shield. Uh, dump the sack of gold. You can have this. And I start the march. Okay. Uh, I think we should probably roll initiative as soon as the spell goes off because that's when everyone becomes aware of what's going on. Ooh. I gotta check saving throws on our little halfling. Do, 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 do. Ooh, that is not a good chance, but it's a reasonable chance. Wait, right, she is what level? Right, okay. <sighs> Ooh, on the money. Uh, the light spell 
kind of fully illuminates this area while the sun is still coming up through a little bit of cloud cover in the east. In the yeah, in the east. Uh, but you got this big spotlight over the the halfling who drops the corpse, draws her weapons, um, or draws her short sword, but not her dagger, and looks to you and says, "I would have left you alone. You did save me. I owed you that much." And yet here you are, stacking bodies. Why are you doing this? Because the powers that be in this land are weak. It is time someone does something about it. But you're killing all these peasants. How is this doing something about it? You need to shed a little blood if you want to see change done. Gotta start somewhere. How is this accomplishing that? I'm confused as to your path. Fear is how you rule. If the people fear you, they will respect you. And then you can do what you need to do. We will make them fear me. Neil, is there any sort of vegetation, grass, that kind of thing for Entangle or not? No, this is like in in the middle of the village square, so it's pretty dirty. You know, this is where everyone walks all the time. Um... Would you like to join me? I will need minions. You're the third I'm nobody's that, minion. And I don't appreciate it. Neil, when does my attack go off? Uh, I was hoping everyone would roll initiative. We have just been talking while we're waiting for the last initiative roll to come in. Right. Um, I don't know what I'm adding to this. Let me check the spell speed. Well, actually, I think I'm just holding to like these. Or- Oh no! So wait, holding to, spells is it's difficult. Around, hold on, it's around to put on the shield, isn't it? Yes. Okay, then I'm just doing that. Okay. okay. Uh, oops, a little low. So the halfling goes after everybody else. Uh, Rob and Rock start at the same time. No, I believe Gerald starts it all. But he's putting on a shield. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Rock and all Rob. Right. Together as I'm, one. I'm in a color sprayer. Okay, you step. Apparently, f- that's the wise thing to do. You step forward and cast color spray. Where is the spell? Color spray. Creatures not allowed or failing saving throw. Da, da, da. All those creatures above the level of the caster and those sixth level or six hit dice or more are entitled to saving throw. Creatures not allowed or failing saving throws whose hit dice are less than or equal to the spellcaster's level are struck unconscious. Those with hit dice or levels greater than one are blinded. Those with hit dice levels three or more of the spellcaster are stunned. What level are you? One. All right. Uh, she gets a saving throw, which is a fail. And you see her like th- this color spray goes off. You gotta be, what, 20 feet away from her to do this? And it, like, dazzling colors across her face, and she stumbles backwards a little bit, kind of looking around, a little starry-eyed, kind of, uh, clearly disoriented by this color spray, but not knocked unconscious. Well, that'll definitely knock out any dex. Uh, yes. Uh, so yes. she's not unconscious? She is not unconscious. She is stunned. Well, she's at least not level one, but I think we kind of figured that. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, that doesn't hit. All right, rock, rocker, rocker world. That's what I was trying to do. Uh, Eleven oh. is a clatter against her bronze chain mail, uh, doing absolutely mm. no damage. AC minus four and no dex penalties. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's well, no, no, no dex penalties. What is the penalty for being stunned? That's a good call. I wasn't calculating that. Stunned. Stunned is a penalty of four to AC, which should bring her to 11 AC exactly, actually. Good call. Well, good call. That's a hit. Excellent. You do. Oh, uh, no. Oh, I almost rolled a d20 there. Nope. No, not that. Not quite. I do six damage. Six to her points with of the damage. Raw. All right. Basically, uh, I'm waiting for her to go unconscious. So you give her a nice, good slash across the chest, breaking apart some of her chain links and uh, cutting her on the shoulder while the rest of the blade just sharpens the the chain mail she wears. 
Uh, and at the end of the round, Gerald has his shield on, and we roll initiative. Okay, and for my um, my move after I cast, I'm gonna move back out of her move and attack range, since she's got less movement than I do. Sure. You move forward, cast a spell, and move back. Um, the rock is the thing in between the two of you, but without the, it'll be fine. Sure. Uh, uh, I'm just kind of going to assume I'll go last in the round, trying to cast Cure Light Wounds if somebody sure. gets injured. That's fine. Uh, Mike Michelson, initiative roll. Oh, sorry for next round. Okay. The halfling goes first uh, with her short sword out kind of in a threatening gesture towards the rock. She reaches back behind her with her left gloved hand and pulls out the cold stone. Uh, And then with a smile starts walking towards the rock. And then- she does? No. She doesn't make a- She throws the stone at you. All right. Um, aiming for an unprotected part of you, but I guess that's probably gonna have to be like your face or something. Not really. Like I've got like pretty much full armor on. Yeah, but yeah. I'm saying like the only well, yeah. area that has yeah. like skin is probably your face. So what you're saying is she has to make a called shot on my. She's face. She's making called shot face against you with her thrown stone, which is probably not a great chance. Uh, I'm gonna say called shot face in this situation is probably like minus five to hit. Um, so that's not great. Can't roll off the table though. No, I don't think a 14 plus modifiers minus five. I think the rock like hits your armor, which instantly chills and freezes and then like rolls to the ground at your feet. Um, kind of okay. part way between the two of you. And then she moves to like stand over it. So she closes the distance well, to you while throwing it, the rock. Like, it's not gonna be about going very far. Right, so kind of clunk. So now she's she's melee range with you, but she already used her action to throw the rock at you, so she can't make an attack at you as well. Wait, the rock hit her with a sword. No, I hit her with I hit her with my rock. Oh. Oh, okay. Because I'm going for the bludgeon her unconscious. Got it. Well, it is uh, Rob's turn now. Damn the fairy fire. All right, she's illuminated by fairy fire. Plus one to hit. Hi, Jack. Plus one to hit her. Yes, I think. Excellent. Is that how fairy fire works? Yes, if it was a dark, it would be plus two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Rock's turn. That's definitely a hit. Roll me some damage. Seven. Oof. Uh, it's not looking too good. You get a nice, uh, I guess it's a smash with the rock on her shoulder, her other shoulder. You can hear some kind of crunching of flesh. Would it be able to like, because she's so small, like push her back so that way she has to actually go through me to get to the rock that's Mm. behind? If you want, that could be in a, that would be like a a separate action though. That's not like trying to damage her. That's a, I'm trying to push her. So if you made a push action, you could do that. Uh, Anyway. um, That's not that much. All right. Yeah. Uh, I think that's everybody's turn. So initiative one more time. Ooh, she gets a five for initiative. Uh, she goes first, she picks up the rock at her feet, which does expose her slightly. I'm gonna give you an opportunity attack at disadvantage because she's not actually leaving, but she is kind of giving herself like a weakness by crouching down to pick something up while engaged in melee. So I feel like you should get something, but not like a full opportunity attack, so. 2d20 d2? Uh, 2d20 kl1. Kl1. Yeah, keep lowest one. So that's gonna be an 18 to hit. That's a hit. Your rock comes down on her back, dealing... Eight damage. Ooh. 
She's taking a lot of damage here. Uh, but she still picks up the stone, and th oh, you're pretty tall, aren't you? I'm very tall. All right, I guess she has I'm to throw like it at you again. Six and a half feet. Uh, she tosses it angle. at your face one more doesn't time. Make, kind of doesn't like, making a uh, ranged attack in melee provoke another attack of opportunity? Hmm. I'm not going to give two attacks of opportunity, one for picking down and then one for throwing the rock. It seems like by the time she was attacking, he would still be recoiling his two-handed rock. Um, but I like what you're thinking about. Uh, the rock gets tossed at your face with a nat 20 and just kind of like... <laughs> freezes to your face and then falls to the ground. And you guys see rock the rock go stiff while he's holding a rock above his head. Don't worry guys, she's taking freaking 21 damage. You can you can get her. Uh 23 damage by my calculations. All right, I'll take that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, Mike Michelson, it's your turn. All right, is there grass nearby here? No, it's the middle of the town square. It's very dirty. But I mean, how big is this town? Is it just a little? It's pretty small. It's maybe 30 buildings total. So what I'm saying is, is there grass I could run towards? Oh, yes, yes. There's grass you could into. run. Yes, yes, definitely. But there's not like grass around where you are standing now. Yeah. Gerald is going to run away from just the pack of dirt as well. Okay. You guys mm. retreat towards the grassy areas? Then I'm going to, uh, since we can move twice as fast as she can. So I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to run since she doesn't have some type of ranged attack. And aside from throwing the rock. And get into um, the foliage. Is there like a tree I can hide behind? Uh, yeah, definitely. There's buildings, trees. If you if you take a full round to run, you can get into almost any type of cover. Well, I want to run so she can still see me and then have a spell prep. Sure. Uh, well, that's going to be a half move then, not a full move. Um, so you can get to what, what sort of cover do you want to get? Because you can only, if you're only doing a half move, that's going to limit you pretty severely. I basically, I want to be in a grassy area, but a tree or something where she can't just like peg me with a rock again. All right, so you want some sort of cover with grass around you. Yeah. Sure. There is a, a small grassy knoll next to the church with a tree on top of the hill that you can go stand up behind. It's maybe a hundred feet from her. So it's All not right, that now far. I'm going to um, specifically shout insulted her you short little midget halfling you won't prevail here and i'll just try to get her coming towards me okay and Ger gerald where do you go hide yeah, one with him okay so you guys are both hiding behind the same tree like one person looking out from here the other person well, above if them it's looking on the grassy way. knoll i'll go like on the other side of the knoll okay cool uh, I think we've kind of slightly stepped out of combat here a little bit. Um, so she just walks over to where the rock is, picks up with her gloved hand the, the stone thing, and uh, and takes the, the, the hilt of her sword and calls over to you guys a hundred and some feet away and says, come over here or I'll break him off one at a time. I'll just snap his finger off and then the next finger, and then the it next finger. Time. Because of All right. Then, Rock, you muted yourself. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm gonna, you know, with my shield strapped, bring out my mace and start going over there. Ah, 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 put those weapons down. I'll turn you to ice just like I did to him and then leave you here. Get away. Don't worry, I'm not here to kill you. If I wanted to kill you, you'd be dead already. I just want to get rid of you. You did save my life, so I owe you one. We'll count this as one. Very well. Put down my weapon. 
so still holding her sword, like ready to break off one of the rock's fingers, she outstretches the, the cold stone towards you, waiting for you to kind of like walk towards her. No, no, I won't follow, but if you don't leave anyone to one thought, bad things could happen to us. You never know what random wild creature could come by and smash us. Hmm, I'm not sure what the old texts say about how long it takes to unfreeze. How long did it take me to thaw out? It took a good 20 or more minutes mm. just sitting next to a strong fire. Hmm, might take you an hour then. Don't think a wild animal's likely to come and smash you in an hour. But that was next to a fire. How do we know we would thaw? Well, you'll be in the direct sunlight all day. Maybe two hours then. Come closer. Just touch this stone and we'll be on our way. She takes a moment and kind of hops up and tries to like touch rock again on his skin with it to, to hit him again. Well, very well. If you plan to leave us here, yes. so be it. All right, well, she's focused on, um, she seems to be engaging Gerald in conversation, he's going forward. I'm sneaking down the far side of the knoll and where like the whole knoll between us. So yeah, so you're going like back and down the of, knoll and around the church? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sort of circling around to where she didn't expect to see me. Sure. Uh, she's still very focused on Gerald. Come on, oh one who won't tell me his name. Come here. Touch this I, little stone. It'll be fine. You saw me thaw out in no time. I outstretch my hand. She touches your fingers with it, and you turn to ice. Uh, she cackles with laughter, looks for the tree, sees that there's no elf there, curses to herself. A few minutes. A few minutes, okay. Um, and then goes back to, to, to be stacking clear, bodies. Neil. Mm -hmm. By the time I was woken up and Rock put on his armor that takes two turns, she was basically thawed out. Two rounds, yeah. 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 So it actually only took her three minutes to thaw out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So tell I, me I'm when aware. I can start attacking. I, I'm aware of the mechanics at play, yeah. All right. Um, so she doesn't I'm, see she is. Mike Michelson anywhere. Because it's also like direct sunlight, fire, the buildings all around. Yeah. Uh, she goes and hoists one more dead body up onto the, the pile and then climbs up on top to, of it. Mike Michelson, as you're coming around the church, you can now see her from the side. She's actually just sitting on a pile of corpses and cackling to herself. Okay, so she's away from the others now? Uh, 15, 20 feet, yeah. They're nearby, but not right adjacent to her. All right, can I drop darkness on her in particular so that the the zone will move around with her? Yes, she'll get a saving throw to avoid it hitting her and being stuck to her, but yes, you can try. All right, I'm gonna try that. Ooh, darkness whew, envelops the whole cluster. Um, it would be centered on her if it hits, and if it doesn't hit, it's centered just behind her. So it's kind of, you know, the whole big area. She, the pile of corpses, and your two allies are engulfed in darkness. And you hear a cry from inside. Ah! I knew he was still around here somewhere. Come out, come out, wherever you are, Michaelson. I I say nothing. I'm not going to give her any sound tracking. Marco. Marco. You see the the like cloud of darkness starting to move. All right, I'm going to pick up a rock. And I'm gonna throw it to try to like make it have it bounce off the tree where the grass was and like make a little bit of noise. Mmm. Give me a roll to hit. Okay. I mean, I guess just a D twenty plus yeah. 
one. Okay, or just a new twenty. Just a flat D twenty is cool. All right. Uh, you miss the tree, but it still land in that same area. So kind of like goes right past the tree and hits, you know, uh, hits the grassy knoll and rolls down it. You can see the darkness stop moving. Okay. And then slowly start going in that direction. And then it All like right. starts to rise as it goes back up the bot, the pile of corpses. And then it descends as it goes down the other pile. Rather than going around, she takes the time to go up and down the hill. All right. So when she's like well into a grassy area, What's that's that? when I'll drop the entangle. Sure. What is the duration of darkness, by the way? This is uh, darkness it's the full racial radius. ability. Okay. It's in the skills and powers. Yes. Under elf? Yeah, it's one of the additional powers you get. Basically, it's Drow heritage, but they don't say that out loud. Right. It's it, but it's the powers that Drow have. Um. And darkness you know, as a priest or wizard of the same level. Okay, so I think it's just the the inverse of light. Okay, so that is one hour plus 10 minutes per level. Yeah. Sweet an Jesus. Hour and 10 minutes. Now, Neil. Okay. Neil, I don't, yep. you know, maybe messing things up a bit, but if me and the rock are in darkness, does the heat from sunlight still make it through the dark darkness, or is that blocked by the darkness as well? That is a very good question. Heat and light are not the same. Heat and light are not the same. Right. Well, uh, you know, I'm just well, I mean, solar radiation sun, has warm It's all electromagnetic it. waves. Yeah, but Neil, if, if there was a torch and then a darkness spell got cast, meaning there was no light from the torch, I'd still right. burn my hand if I touched the torch. Right, but that's by conduction, not radiation. Well, if I put my hand near the torch, I would assume I would still... Right, but that's because the torch is heating up the air. The, the warmth from the sunlight is because the actual photons are bringing uh, energy with them. So The photons are still going. No, you not just in can't darkness. See <laughs> well, does that stop well, all okay, cosmic yeah, radiation, So I guess that's Neil? the question here, is does the darkness spell create perfect shade? Or does it just nullify visual sensors in the area? Do the photon, what happens to the electromagnetic energy of the sun when you're does within a, a darkness level spell? Does spell destroy photons? I, uh, I, look, I mean, it's fucking magic, man. There's like 10 well, million what, ways oh, this could go on, down. Neil, what, what does it do to the other subatomic particles then, Neil? I don't like, fucking know, man. Right. something I didn't mean to. <laughs> could I make a first level spell that destroys electrons? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, does how does invisibility work? Does it just make your body? How, how does that? Aff I mean, clearly the photons are just traveling through you instead of even hitting you. So does that turn photons temporarily into higher energy wavelengths as they pass through your body? Really? Are you actually get like being hit Why by gamma you rays when, when you're being invisible? If I made a first level spell that destroyed neutrons, then it'd be only the posit uh, the um, the protons, the positive charge, with the neutrons that not there to to counteract them all the atoms in your body would just fly apart, repelled by the positive charge of the protons. Hold Total on. atomic destruction. Oh my God. I'm, I've got you... to design this first level <laughs> atomic blast spell. If you spell. get rid of the electrons, that's actually, I believe, what is it? The negative part of yeah. it? Yeah. But isn't so it the neutrons? I guess the neutrons left... are neutrally oh. Neutrons Hold are neutrally on. charged. Hold yeah. on. So that would leave only the protons, so a positive charge. So that'd be perfect for Mike Matherson's middle management trying to. Create yeah, a actually, if you vibe. get rid of the neutrons, you're not going to. Uh, Connor here is the one to correct me on this, but I think if you get rid of the neutrons, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the particles are still being <laughs> held together by the strong and weak nuclear forces. The neutron, the lack of neutrons, wouldn't cause the remaining protons to expand, right? Uh, so basically how it would work is even at that rate, um, this has to do with also, also the theory of why pretty much any uh, element over about 82 on the periodic table is unstable. Uh, if you just suddenly took away all the 
neutrons in an element. Um, some of the smaller ones, like hydrogen, not be affected at all. Holy crap, because most hydrogen is neither deuterium nor tritium. Um, but yeah, you would have it a lot of stuff decaying, but eventually, because of how many protons there are, some of it, uh, some would go beta plus decay, uh, and then you'd get more neutrons. But in the sense of what would it do to people, it'd be very, very bad for you. Uh, if you remove the... neutrons from people, no shit. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> isn't it? But uh, I'm not. I'm not versed well enough in the theoretical side of what would happen to something on a high level like that. Would uh, it be you, massive I'll, radiation discharge? Well, yeah, because radiation is just uh, <laughs> the release of energetic particles. I think uh, what we're all getting at here is no, a first level spell does not destroy any destroy. subatomic yes, particles. Yes, it does not destroy subatomic particles. No, no, so like I, I think I it probably to... does destroy the photons. First level spells can definitely Set create the I think when we, destruction. I think when we're dealing with magic, particles. it's not so much it destroys <laughs> them, they just kind of pass through the area without having an effect on it. Right, like if I cast darkness at the mouth of a cave, I can. Does the light from outside illuminate the inside of the cave still? Is it just like an orb of darkness, but the light would still illuminate everything else? You know, if I that's cast a, a, a if I cast a, a a small darkness spell that's like three inches in diameter around a candle in a dark room, is the rest of the room lit, but I just can't see the flame? How does the darkness spell really work, guys? There are a lot of questions here. Let's not worry about them. I'll just tell you when you thaw out. Okay. That's what I've been trying to <laughs> Because it should be really soon, based on what I know of how this rock works. <laughs> oh, God. But the potential for it. I, I, I radiation for spells. But how about this? In order to make a spell like that, you have to know all the stuff behind nuclear theory. Yes, yes. And it's almost like it took us a while. That's what the divination out. sphere is for. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I forgot what was happening in game. We've she, been so distracted. Uh, she, she, she was towards, like sneaking towards the knoll where he threw the rock. Yeah. Oh, right, and right. Going Rob towards the grassy to knoll. Throw down and tangle. All right, I'll throw yeah. another rock. She heard it then. I'll throw another rock to make a little bit of noise in that area. Okay. Let's get a... Ooh, okay. Uh, the darkness ball stops moving. It's hard to ex tell exactly where she is and where the grass begins and ends because now the darkness is slightly overlapping the grass, but is it is it is the middle of the darkness to the grass yet? You're not sure, but the it has stopped. All right, and then you I'll hear just sit and wait. You hear the sounds of digging. Shk. Did she have a shovel? I mean, we did defrost her. No, she, she definitely didn't, didn't have a shovel her on her. That doesn't, would be it doesn't like sound like digging with your hands. Sword. Yeah. You didn't see a shovel on her when you defrosted her. Maybe she picked up a shovel from the pile of bodies that she was walking around. You know, she's been walking around in this darkness and there's a lot of things in this village. I don't know, people just don't go walking around with shovels the hell of it. It's not yeah. like- Also, if she was piling like they're, bodies, they're why would she take combat. the shovel as well? That, these are all really good questions, but you do hear the sound of something metal digging into the ground. It's not digging with her hands. It's like something is cutting into it. I'll throw a rock a bit closer to where she is. Uh, all right, you toss the rock closer. And again, there's a pause as the rock lands, and she calls out, Mike Michelson, I know you're here. Come out where I can see you. There's there's buildings that are burning? Yes. Can I take a burning piece of wood without getting myself burned, like some, you know, holding onto a piece of this isn't burned, and kind of like throw it off into the, um, her darkness sphere? Sure. All right, I'll do Are that. Are you trying to hit her in the darkness? If I can, but Give me a it doesn't matter. To... I mean, I'm sure she's gonna like realize she's being pelted by fire. Ah, yeah. Uh, give me a, a roll to hit, just a, a wild, maybe maybe you actually hit her with this log that you're tossing. 
Nope. Okay, so it lands nearby her. Um, uh, she does give yeah, a, a shout. That she could get burned if she reached it. Yes, uh, you do hear like a shout or a cry of surprise, uh, followed by the sounds of thwacking, uh, and then like the stick that's burning kind of spins out of the darkness, uh, followed by a string of curses. And around now is when the rock starts to thaw out. Uh, you have a splitting headache, the worst brain freeze ever, and you're kind of disoriented for a few minutes. Uh, but you can see this big darkness pile, this semi-sphere of darkness, and this, you hear this shh, shh, You also shh. see uh, pretty shh. close to you, just Gerald with his hand outstretched. <laughs> All right, draw. I'll repeat, throw another burning piece of debris into the batter at the middle part. All right. Do I see uh, Mike? Um, I think Mike is kind of hidden. Maybe you see it. Maybe yeah. you don't. I don't know. Well, I'm, can... I'm getting burning pieces of debris from Bill. All right. Yeah, you, you can, can totally spot me. Mike. Yeah. All right. I see him, and I'm gonna drop my rock. Does he say anything when he sees me? I don't think so. Rob. Rob. I I put my finger up like this. Actually, I'll, I'll walk over to him and go, be very quiet, she can't see us. We can throw burning stuff at her. She's right in the middle of the darkness. I was just gonna walk in there and hit her with my sword anyway. You could throw rocks at her. I could throw rocks at her. I could throw rocks at her pretty well. How many good rocks are there that aren't my rock? I mean, there's no good rocks that aren't your rock. It's well, the I'm best like rock. Well, good fist. That it's just like I could freaking pitch him at her all day. Uh, yeah, you can you can find basically unlimited fence? things to throw at her in this village. You know, you can find rocks, people's right. plates, pitchforks. You you can find shit to throw at her for days. Put my rock down, and I'm just gonna start throwing stuff at her. Like I'm talking like 80, 90 mile per hour fastballs here. All right. Well, there is a, a nice big aura of darkness, so you're gonna have a hard time even spotting her. Uh, it's That's like okay. a 40 foot well, across hemisphere. She was trying to make noise. But she's the I'm dead center of it. Yeah, but it's, it's still difficult to target the dead center of like a 40 foot thing that you can't really see. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the nice thing about it being a hemisphere. Now, Neil? Yeah, what's up? Doesn't the rock, wait, hold on. Connor, don't, doesn't the rock have blind fighting? No, I don't. Oh. Yeah. Um, so go ahead and make me an attack roll at minus four for not being able to see. All right. Uh, minus four. All right. Darn. Poof. Um, there is the continued sound of going on. Like clop around a bit. Yeah, I'm going to keep chucking, like, until I either can't find anything to throw at her or I get bored, sure. tackle her. Bored and just tackle her in the darkness? Yep. All right. That one? Uh, oh, hold on. Uh, you can hear uh, someone fall? momentarily. You can hear an exclamation as it hits her but does not damage her. And that followed by a string of, God damn it! All right. Mike Michael said, come damage? out here, fight fair! You, you thought now, Gerald. How doesn't it damage, though? hits armor yeah but you can damage people with like it doesn't stones. damage her it hits it you know it's like you hit her armor you you don't roll high enough to do damage but you, you hit the target yeah again okay. with the sevens oh nope. Ooh, rob Riff rob oh he's still there he's back okay cool uh so everybody's awake now the next blow kind of lands yeah, nearby Apparently a darkness spell was cast and disrupted the electromagnetic radiation that composes my wireless network. Right. Anyway. So after the third rock, I'm just like, I know what she's doing. I know exactly what she's doing, and I ain't having none of this. So I'm gonna grab my rock again, and put uh -huh. it in my bag, and I'm gonna- See how he says he puts his rock in his bag? It's an important detail, I appreciate yeah, that. Well, that and also because I've got stuff I want to do with it. Because um, I did say I put it rock, down. Rock, rock, gonna... rock. Oh. Hmm? Hmm. 
and I'm going to use my best because she's making this very convenient sh sh sound. It should be quite easy to find her if I'm actually in there because it's going to be very easy to locate how close she is to me so I can get there, freaking get her with surprise because even if she can hear me coming, it's still going to be pretty hard for her to figure out exactly where I'm at and for her to get an attack off on me so I can easily grapple her because she's half my size. I've got 17 strength and I can get that rock away from her before she can bury it. Okay. So, I want you, as you come into this to try and where you're trying to find her, I want you to make me a dexterity check. Nice. You start coming forward and sure enough, you step on this like large mound of dirt that has developed and almost slip, but catch yourself before you fall over entirely into it. Um, you can hear the sounds, they're real close to you. And... All right, so I can hear it. I mm -hmm. can go for a tackle. All right, give me a roll to hit. You can more or less get the right area where she is, but you still can't see her, but she can't see you. So you get a penalty of four to hit her, and she gets a penalty of four to her AC because she can't see it coming. So it's all so, kind of a wash. So just roll what I would normally would roll. For an attack, for a tackle, yeah. Dang it. Uh, you go for a tackle. You misgauge the size of this hill and just kind of like fall into it and it comes up to your belly and you realize there's a pretty damn big pile of dirt here. How did she get so deep? Well, she guys have left her here digging for How a good long? while. How long? Like, um, every attack roll that you've made has been a minute. Plus it took you a while to thaw out. She's been so digging this hole for- 10 minutes? For at least 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. That is huge for a hole, especially someone half her size. Yeah. No, that right, so maybe- it, like you fall forward and land on your belly. It's not like it's like a, a, five, a four foot pile of dirt. It's maybe like a two and a half or three foot pile of dirt. Maybe. All right, I'll maybe. give you that one. All That's right. pretty good for a halfling. It's uh, pretty damn good a for a halfling. Neil, don't give a child to, to make dig. them dig. Uh, we well, <laughs> why don't you guys stop backseat gaming and play? <laughs> No, all right. Um, yeah, I'm basically wow. going to okay. keep trying. Uh, you, so you just try and tackle her again, all right. Yeah, because uh, I'm, I know she's going to have a hard time okay. hitting me in the face. Let's use a... Um, I, I guess we don't really need an initiative rule here. Uh, go ahead and make me another tackle. We just keep getting <laughs> This worse. time you just like step over and completely miss her and go right past the side of her, I guess. Um, uh, and then you hear a voice call out from right past where you went. You'll never find me now. <laughs> and on that, the, can I make the, a perception check to see if I actually can find her because she just gave me her exact yes, location? Yes, make me a perception check. But the, the shaking noise oh. stops <laughs> after that. God. You can't Freaking find a rock. You don't even know which way it is. Now that the sh sh noise is gone, it's just silence. But don't worry, I got her. <laughs> Um, if you get the right location, if you can get the right direction on her, yes, you absolutely have her. I rolled a 23. Um, you did roll a 23 on your tack roll. We just got to make sure you find a, the right tackle. location. It's oh. <laughs> uh, a critical tackle, guys. <laughs> all right. You think you find her, you go for a tackle, and you just wrap this mound of dirt in your arms, and you squeeze the dirt. Gerald, Mike Michelson, do you have anything to say? <sighs> All right, so because I'm squeezing this- I'm just still waiting with my entangles already. How's the soil, Neil? Earthy. Like earthy, Loose. like not a lot of rocks? Yeah, a few like, small like, ones. Okay, so I'm gonna like, like just start getting- Excellent, that's exactly what I want. I'm gonna get that stuff. I'm gonna start tossing it in directions and listening for rocks clanking on metal. Oh, all right. So you just start tossing it around, and sure enough, you can hear the little rocks ding, 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 off of her armor. It's just like just to your left. Just to the left? Like 90 degrees left. Good thing it's just a to touch. What do you do? I, I tackle her. All right. You go for the tackle. Uh, make me another roll to hit. Oh, so that, that, eight, that 13 isn't it? Oh, I, I, that was your tackle roll? Okay, perfect. Yeah. That's beautiful. I love it. Uh, you go to tackle her, 
and find yourself flopping on the ground, but then like your belly sagging into a hole, and then there's this like sharp pain as a sword comes up from underground, not from underground, but from, like below the, the ground level towards your belly. Um, which is actually, what's your armor class? 18. Okay, so she barely beats that and stabs you in the gut for nine points of damage with her short sword. Very well. Um, and the, the impression that the rock you're getting now, because now you're like collapsed on the ground, is that she has dug like a little trench or a little hole and buried herself in it. So she's at ground level and was just like in here with her sword. So you went to tackle her as if she were standing and like fell on top of where she is. And she's just below okay. you stabbing up at you. I'm going to reach now and pull her out. All right, I think we need to do initiative rolls between the two of you now. While the rest of you outside, you, you hear the rock jumping on the ground and throwing dirt. <sighs> Guys, I found her. She's in a hole. Oh, uh, she doesn't want it to well not on be dark anymore. Please. Okay, Neil, I take out the continual light pebble. Okay, but we need to roll initiative, please. Uh, would this just be a plus three to yes. my initiative roll? Yes. Oh, you beat her by <laughs> one. Oh no, Gerald beats her by one. Rock beats her by a lot. Uh, so Rock, you reach in. She can't see you, so she doesn't get a free attack of opportunity on you. Um, and you make a grab attack for her. Oh, uh, just a grab attack? Yeah. All right. Uh, you can get a hand on her armor, but not on her flesh. So you That's can like fine. grab her by the chain mail. Does she get, for like She's grappling, does she even get armor as a... Yeah, well, yeah that's, that's what I mean. Like, he, he gets her. He gets a hold on her, her armor, which is good. And it's going to be a lot harder so, for her to slip yeah. out of her armor than it is a shirt. Yeah, definitely. So, it's it's chain mail. That, can I make uh, my strength check to just rip her out of the hole? Uh, yes, let's make opposed strength checks. No, she doesn't win. Um, yes, she does. Wait, no, what? no, I don't think she does. Yeah, that's what I no, thought. No, no. Uh, so you, you lift the halfling out of the hole. Gerald, throw it now. All right, I throw the continual light pebble onto the area. It cancels the darkness it. spell. Um, and you all see the rock standing one foot in a hole, one foot on the, the ground and holding a halfling up in the air. Does she have the rock with her? Uh, you don't see it on her. It's okay. definitely not in her hands. She's got her short sword grasped in one hand, the other hand just kind of flailing about wildly. Is there a shovel in the hole? <laughs> no, there's no shovel, but her sword is pretty damn dirty and dinged up. All right. All right. It's going to have to be like a minus to damage. Oh, it's going to have to be. Well. Um, the halfling gets her turn. Uh, she's just gonna, you're grappling her, but you're holding her. You've just got like a three foot reach on your say, arm. I'd say what I did was like one of those like rip her out, shove her on the ground. Like, oh, you not threw her, her to the ground? Okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't say I'm lifting her up cause that's gonna take a lot of energy. I would say get her out of the hole and just like get her to the ground. I can understand uh, you not, uh, I can understand like trying to like force her to the ground being like a whole bunch of other crap so just getting her to the ground getting her out of the hole getting her visible slam her into the ground all right so if you threw her, her on the ground. ground yeah that's fine why don't you roll a, a d6 we'll consider that 10 feet of falling damage with the extra force of you tossing her all right all right she takes four um and then she makes a swipe at your leg with a 16 to hit. Nope. Nope, no dice. And initiative for the next round. I've had it Oh, I'm sorry, she gets a second attack that round because she got one the last round and she specialized. So she makes her second attack at the end of the round, which is a 28 to hit. Yeah. Uh, that clears by 10. Yeah, that does. I'll say throw her into the grass. She hits you for 15 points of damage with the short sword. And now we roll for initiative. Everybody. Everybody, initiative time. Yay. So if I threw her, um, 
she is she on the grass now? No, no, the grass is still a good ten feet away. Okay. You should be able to hurl a halfling pretty far. He could, but he just said to the ground. You know, yeah, you said it to yeah. the. You said put her in the grass afterwards. So, is there any way I could maneuver this fight to the grass? Yeah, you could try and like pick, grab her, and just walk her over to the grass and toss her on it. But now that there's plenty of light, if we make an unarmed attack against her, she gets an attack of opportunity against yeah. you at plus four to hit. So it's yeah, it's a risky kind of thing now that we can. He's see. He's already it. got a hold though. No, I, uh, I threw, he her, threw her to the ground. Oh, he picked... oh I assumed you I were mean, still I... holding on to her. Like, you picked I mean, her up and said, Andrew, put still had her, a hand but off. Neil said I could throw her and take that damage. So, because yeah. I already took the damage. Um, all right. Then I'll just, I just had enough of her crap. Yeah, I'm just chop her. All right. So, 13, 6, 9. Uh, the 9 goes first. Gerald, Rob. if you wouldn't mind. 19. 19. That's... Oh, dear God. But the, the 6 goes first. Uh, Mike Michelson. What'd you say, Rob? All right. Um, well, if he, okay, I, I thought he was still holding onto her and could throw her out of the grass. But if he's actually let go of her, then actually I'll go on three because I'll move forward. And can I angle, like, position myself so that the color spray hits her and not the rock? Easy peasy. Yeah. All right. So I'll do that. Okay. Second and last color spray. You toss another color spray at her. She, I think that's actually a pass. 15, hold on, I need to take a look at her saving throws, is a pass by one. She is unaffected by the color spray. Shielding her eyes at the last moment from the, the bright swath of colors that come her way. Uh, it is the halfling's turn. Sword in hand, rock standing before her. Bleeding from all over, she gets to her feet and lunges at you, saying, Simon says, die! Uh, that's a 21 against you, is just a hit, not a crit. And you take another 10 points of damage. Uh, initiative, uh, no, not initiative, it's Gerald's turn. The rock is still up, right? Yes. All right, I'm going to run over in CLW on him. All right, give me a D8 for HP healing. Five. 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 His wounds heal over, and then it is the rock's turn, finally. Nah. 20, 20, 20. Oh, that's a hit. Your two-handed sword, I take this is? Oh, yeah. Slams into her <laughs> for 12 points of damage. And remember, she's already taken, what, 29? I have been tracking her HP. Uh, there's a look of surprise on her face as this sword, like, cuts through a few of the chains on her armor and leaves this big streak of blood that drips to the ground. Um, she's badly wounded. Holy crap, she has more HP than I do. She has a lot of HP. Yeah. Uh, and then we go to initiative. So fast. She goes at four. Twelve for the rock, six for Robert, ten for Gerald. She's going to make a I, I haven't I haven't even rolled yet. I'm still oh. trying to think. Well, but you've got like a plus eight modifier to your roll, plus right? Ten. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. So she's gonna I mean, she goes at four. I guess that you could try you could tie her if you tried to punch her. Seems yeah, Neil. Alright. Two attacks this round. These other people are being really annoying. Gerald, what are you wearing? What are you dressed uh, in? Got a shield, leather armor. Mm. Uh, Mike Michelson, what are you wearing? I'm just a humble mage. So you just got like robes on? Yeah. Did they go all the way down to your ankles? Yeah. They go all the way down to your wrists? They're, they're the wizard robes. Wizard yeah. robes. Nice big baggy wizard robes. Yeah, they, they've got, like, probably, like, moons and stars on them and everything. Oh, wonderful. Okay. I'll even have, like, a pointed hat with moons and stars nice. on Nice. I love it. Is it. Are they blue robes with silver moons and stars? 
Um, Getting distracted. I kind slightly. of feel like they would look even cooler if they were black robes with silver moons and stars. And I'll even have some clovers on there. Oh, okay. Silver clovers? Green clovers would be better, but silver clovers. Okay, okay. I can get behind this decision. All right, she uh, once again just makes a slash at the rock then. Uh, with a 17, no, 15 to hit. Get wrecked. Uh, it's a complete miss. Rob's turn. I'm gonna move back again past the grass with my entangle spell ready to go. Should she move into the grass. Okay. Still about 10 feet from the grass. Gerald's turn. Three HP. Awesome. Three HP back to the rock. Rock's turn. Uh, she moved back to the grass, you said? No, no, no. She's still 10 or 15 feet from the grass. Okay. Oops. Oh, wait, no. She still has fairy fires, so that should be a 17. Ooh, good, because a 16 is a miss, but a 17 is a hit. Excellent. Uh, you hit her for one for how many points of damage? 19, or 13. Oh, my God. She's still alive, but barely Holy holding crap, on. She has 54 H or more than 54 HP? Uh, well, your, your math is off, actually. Or, originally, yeah, she got yeah. more than that. Well, she has more than that, because originally you said 23. All right, cool. You've dealt then, 52 points of damage to her. That's what I see. First time you said 23, so I went off of those numbers. So I've gone off of 21, I would have been right. Oh, uh, sure. I don't know. Whatever. I, I, I'm just yeah. doing I'm just doing my calculations on the side. You've yeah. done 52 points of damage, and she's still alive. But she gets her second attack at the end of the round at the rock which is a 19 to hit. And Rock does, also gets a second attack. He's too does. Assuming I stay up. Uh, you take seven points of damage from the short sword. <laughs> Thank you, healer. You are the best. And yeah. Rock attack God. is a clatter against the armor. Oh. No dice. Initiative for the next round. The, Neil, this short I... little halfling calls out to you. It didn't have to go this way. You could have lived. You could have joined my army, my empire. But no, you decided to defy me instead of serve me. Initiative rolls. Ooh, good roll there, Rob. Nice, Gerald. Is that 14? Yes, no, that's Rock's attack. Neil. Could I withdraw towards the grass? Yes. That's a d10 plus three. D10 plus three? Yes. All right. Gerald, follow me. <laughs> well, Gerald, that way. All right, Robert, you tie with Carol. Carrie? Carrie? Carrie. God, she goes fast. Yeah, well, two and three is five, so. Honestly, I'm, again, I'm holding my um, entangle for when she moves into wait, the grass. Wait. What's the speed for short swords? Three. It's fast, little suckers. So uh, it... she takes a slash at the rock. Yes. Fists are three and daggers are two. I don't know how attacking with the dagger is faster than attacking with your fist, but those how are the is rules. Attacking at all faster than moving. How is look. attacking with a short sword the same as attacking with a fist? How look? I, these are the rules. We're just working I, with I them, okay? We're I just know, working is, with that's them. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm sure we could come up with some reason why it would make sense, but we're just we're working with the rules that we've got. Um, she makes an attack against the rock with a 20 to hit. Yep. Goodbye. And deals eight points of damage to him. She draws the short sword out of his body as he slumps to the ground and with the wicked grin moves to close with Gerald which is no. not that far away from the rock because he just healed the rock last round. But she can't make an attack this she round. She does not make an attack, but she is adjacent to Gerald. Um, and yeah, that's the same. Withdraw yeah. into turn. the grass, Gerald. Yeah, just. <sighs> A, hold on. I need to look at something. Okay. I cast her light wounds on the rock. Um, so you're casting a spell while she's in melee next to you. 
Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable taking the attack of opportunity that's gonna be incurred as you have to like bend down and heal the rock? Yeah. Yeah, okay. She makes the attack at you. Oh my God. It's actually only a 12. Complete miss, I've Com got 17. Complete miss. Um, so he's automatically back up to one, same round as he went down, he can still fight. Yep. Rock is back in action. Rob, uh, your spell is still being held. Rock, you can mm. roll for initiative on the next round, and let's roll for initiative on the next round. Wait, so I can't take any actions this round? No, I mean, you went down and then you got healed, but you still so, lose your, your turn for the round going down and coming right. back up. Yeah. There's got to be at least some downside to being knocked unconscious temporarily. I'm going to try and do the same thing. Okay. Um, I know we've got an advantage. We need to exploit it and... Holy crap, I can never roll well on initiative. It's, we all have our curses in life. I destroy the internet wherever I go. You roll poorly on initiative. Anna Prosser rolls terribly on any important attack roll of any kind. <laughs> Ryan, oh, Ryuzilla Ryan. just rolls poorly all the time. You know, we, we have our, our roles to play in life. Um, poor Ryan. That's a good point. Actually, since I held my action, could I change my spell? Uh, sure. What do you want to change it to? Wait, Neil, um, I'm going to yeah. move forward to the rock. And I'm going to say, buddy, I know you can do this. You've got this. And cast CLW on him, but I'm just like making a big point of motivating him. Wait, Neil, did you some... say And less point on... <laughs> healing right right uh so go ahead and do it you can be you can avoid being adjacent right. to her while you heal him um right, Neil, you Rock, when you come right? awake you are so like there were there was you and her and behind you was gerald and then you went down so she just went to your side and attacked gerald so when you come up like okay. she's sort of facing both of you okay so then if she's on the side of me i thought she's still in front of me uh that that eight is gonna actually be a 15. okay 15. Okay, cool and that. you're at 2 HP. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, she rolls a 5 for initiative. I think we still need Mike Michelson's initiative roll. Alright. Um, what is the initiative modifier for picking up a rock? 3. All right, she goes first. Uh, she's gonna make an attack at Gerald with a 17 to hit. Exact AC. All right. The short sword plunges into you for 11 points of damage. I go down. With a short sword? <laughs> with a short sword. Yeah. You can calculate what sort of damage bonus you would need to be able to do that. Plus five damage. So yeah. Maybe it's a... hmm. I mean, she does have over 50 hit points. Something's going on here. But the sword wasn't magical. Not that you notice. Um, let's see. So Gerald goes down and it is Michelson's turn. Yeah, because that eight is a 15. All right. I run over, grab the continual light stone that is canceling the darkness and run. <laughs> That's plunging her back into darkness. <laughs> All right, give me a perception check to find the continual light stone in the middle of the battle. It's, it's glowing. glowing. It's yeah, glowing. but it's, it's producing light. daylight, and everything around it is at the same light. And it's a, it's a pebble, remember? It's a continual light pebble in the middle of a battlefield. All right, no problem. Oh, my God, you have five perception. No wonder you were complaining about having to look. Yeah, you totally <laughs> find it. No problem. I was figuring it'd be like a 50-50 chance for you to find it. <laughs> um, but you get it and you leave and you plunge the remainder of the people back into darkness. My, my idea for going with five for, for perception was that the big spiky helmet really restricted my vision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, what would the modifier be to hit her now? 
So, in darkness, you have a penalty of four to hit if you can't see your opponent. If Watch your opponent you can't see the attack coming, you have a penalty of four to the AC. So, in darkness, but if you can find each other, the attack and the attack bonuses and penalties are a wash, basically. Neil, but, but she, she doesn't, doesn't get dex. Get dex. Yes, yeah, her dex true. gets excluded. So this cancels that fairy fire thing. Yes, fairy fire is no longer effective either. But I'm still flanking her. Uh, you're facing her. I don't think she was ever I've, flanking hold on. her. Flank shouldn't matter in darkness. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So that's true. Flank doesn't anyway. matter in darkness. Yeah. 21 is a hit. Your two-hander comes clattering into her side for 11 damage. 63. Okay. Do I hear a body hit the floor? Uh, you hear something moving around. It could That's... be a body hitting the floor, or maybe it's another halfling surprise. Yeah. All right, so I assume you're going to say, roll initiative. No, you, she's totally down. Yeah. Excellent. So I'm going to look around for a, a small body, uh, and then you, a big body. You find a small body and a big body. All right, so I'm going to drag the big body out of the darkness and say, Mike, big body, we need take help a point now. of bleeding damage yep. for, that, for this round in action. Mike, can you do anything about this? Last time I tried this, I screwed it up pretty bad. We don't have a lot of time. Try try what exactly? Just patch him up. Um, that was my one CLW. Like, we just need to stop the bleeding, all right? Uh, can I try to just do a untrained? If you don't have a healing proficiency, you can make an intelligence check to try and bind the wounds. All right. I'm assuming you have better than eight. I'll do the best I can then. All right, take another point of bleeding damage, Gerald. And mm. let's do the int check. 21 or higher. Oops. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you can stop the bleeding in no time. And why don't we take our last break a little bit late here as you stop the bleeding and find the body of Carrie. Uh, see you guys on the other side of our break.